Hi, I'm Mark Loftus, and in this Post TV podcast, I'm joined by Dell Technologies' Thomas Burns, who's the company's CTO for media and entertainment in the Americas. Tom, welcome. Nice to see you, Mark. Good to catch up as always. Uh, we're right at the verge of NAB 2023, and I know that you guys are going to have a uh, major presence there. Do you want to talk about what your plans are for the uh, for the show this year? Sure. It's going to be a really interesting booth. Um, we've got NVIDIA in our booth, as well as Dell's Client Solutions Group. So we're going to be showing full end-to-end M&E solutions from uh, new laptops and displays, new precision tower uh, workstations, Dell networking that supports PTP v2, and so it's uh, it can fit into broadcasters ST2110 workloads. Uh, I myself come from the storage side of the house, so that's Isilon for file and ECS for object. Uh, obviously, Isilon has now uh, been rebranded as PowerScale. And we're showing some incredible advances in the things that, you know, OneFS, our underlying file system, whether you call it Isilon or PowerScale, mm-hmm. OneFS has been known for like scale and performance and security for almost 20 years now. And so we continue to increase the scale, uh, the ability to scale by decoupling compute power from storage capacity, that's how the cloud providers are able to provide infinite scale. And so now you can do that as we continue to further decouple the capacity from the compute side of our 1FS file serving uh, scale out NAS. Mm -hmm. And you should look for some uh, announcements as our customers have asked us for containerized and virtualized storage. We've containerized our ECS product, the object store. That's now available as object scale in a Kubernetes containerized environment. And we're gonna be launching a further uh, customer managed software defined power scale. Uh, we, you should look for some announcements on those offerings after NAB. Okay. And this plays into the trends that we're seeing with remote workflows, a lot of uh, distributed talent working uh, collaboratively on projects. Whether you look at the Movie Lab's 2030 vision that prescribes connected uh, collaborative communication across geo-spanning workflows, or even like an um, an individual vendor such as NVIDIA with their Omniverse uh, platform. Everybody has learned the uh, lessons of the pandemic as well as things like talent availability and tax credits being tied to a particular geo so that remote work is now fully mature from the you know old days of just bring your laptop home and figure it out to mm-hmm. now we have secure remote graphics edge either through VMware's Horizon View, through Teradici. Uh, Dell is still Teradici's largest OEM, even though they got sold to our competitor, or hmm. specialized solutions such as NVIDIA's VDI solution that ties into their um, remote environment. And so everything's virtualized, everything's uh, at scale, uh, ginormous you know, geo-spanning scale, and maintaining security when you have all of these hybrid workflows. PowerScale by itself is the world's most secure NAS today. But as we uh, look at these hybrid workflows with all kinds of customer-defined interfaces, you you have to have a very, very uh, secure and and good monitoring, which one of the things that we're going to be showing is the ability to take our existing monitoring packages and make them more, um, what do you want to call it, anomaly first, uh, using machine learning techniques, instead of just dumping a bunch of log files on you, using using machine learning techniques to look for anomalies and then flagging those for the operator to look at. That kind of goes over the whole trend of how do you make this enormous scale with this blisteringly fast performance, how do you make it easy to manage in a hybrid cloud workflow? Mm -hmm. So automation, security, and performance. That's what we're going to be showing on the storage side. Okay. But you guys have a wide portfolio beyond storage. You have your workstations, you have your displays. I always think of the precisions as the line of uh, products that users in the post-production space uh, kind of 
aim towards? Do you have anything that you can give us updates on as far as precision, sure. either towers or laptops? The new Precision 7980 is going to be launched at NAB, and that's available with Intel as well as AMD CPUs. The server lineup has been refreshed so that our 16G servers with really, really improved cooling and better power uh, requirements for sustainability, those can be configured with Intel, or we're going to be showing the AMD Epic as well as Genoa CPUs on the booth because the Genoas are just new. And, you know, the overarching trend is that, you know, everybody's looking to virtualize their compute and slowly behind that, we're figuring out how to virtualize our storage mm -hmm. so that the concept of the cloud isn't necessarily a place. It's just whatever's at the end of your unified control plane. And by upping our game with our monitoring software, our security software, and making especially sure to reinforce security when you move from a file world to an object world and back again, it's really automation and orchestration I think people have found is the only way to manage a hybrid cloud uh, deployment because there's just too many moving parts. So mm -hmm. working with companies like Ansible and uh, Terraform, uh, we've been able to implement that kind of infrastructure as code, which is an enterprise IT thing from the data center. And now we're starting to see that media and entertainment projects resemble nothing so much as DevOps, you know, continuous integration and continuous delivery. And so we're seeing a, a merge of enterprise IT data center workflow and orchestration and the globally distributed needs of a, of a feature or episodic project. What are you seeing trend-wise between towers versus mobile units, just based on talent maybe working from home? Do they necessarily need to have a mobile workstation to work from home, or can they have a tower knowing that they have that power at home and they're working with you know a global type of uh, collaboration scenario? I think the secure aspects of a Teradici remote workflow have shown us that it's best to keep the compute right close to the storage. So whether that's in the facility, the, the machine room at the facility, or maybe they've outsourced uh, all of the uh, compute and storage to a colo someplace so that uh, people can access it uh, all across the continent. I think what we've, we've realized is that rather than try to crank up your existing enterprise IT firewall, coming in through an encrypted protocol means that you wanna keep your, your highest performing workstations right close to the compute. And you can just have a little laptop or like one of these Dell Wise 5070 endpoints or something uh, because you don't need that uh, full compute uh, at your home office if you're working in this secure graphics edge kind of way that you get with Teradici. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, you had touched on it a little bit, uh, AI and machine learning. What do you think some of the trends are or things that we're going to see at a show this year? How's that affecting the side of the industry, the media and entertainment content production side, per se? AI for content creation. I don't honestly feel able to comment on that because I have no idea what's going to happen based on hmm. the flurry of activity we've seen so far. But I can say that Dell is devoting a whack of engineering resources into using machine learning techniques to do the security stuff, processing the log files, um, anomaly driven, anomaly first view of looking through log files is the big uh, thing that Dell is contributing both to the open source community and to our own products. Okay. Uh, some of the partners that'll be at your booth, you had mentioned NVIDIA will be one of them. Who else do you guys have there and any other presentations that you might want to highlight? NVIDIA is going to be right in our booth, mm -hmm. but it's super great to see AMD across the way and uh, companies that we, ISVs that we partner with like EVS are going to be right next door. So there's going to be quite a little crowd. We're hoping to have um, coordinate everybody's after show booth drinks so that we can just spill out into the aisle. I don't know if they'll let us do that, though. Uh, are the products that are going to be at the show shipping at this point? Or are they near to ship? What's the uh, what's the arrangement there as far as delivery? Everything that we have out on the show floor is shipping today. We have a couple of NDA announcements um, around software-defined power scale or power scale virtual edition, as we're calling it, uh, that are NDA only. And so we may have uh, some of those NDA discussions at the booth 
but everything that we're showing will be things that are in use today, whether it's server storage or networking. Cool. Anything on the display front? That's another interesting angle there, knowing that you may be having talent working from home and have to have accurate displays. The Dell Precision Color line is really calibratable and not quite full DCI P3, but 95% of DCI P3 color gamut in a much less expensive package than you get from some of the um, bespoke monitor manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when you combine the, H, uh, the high dynamic range flavor of the Dell Precision Color displays with that calibratability, and then the coolest thing that everybody likes are these 38 inch curved displays so that you can have two full displays with a built-in KVM. People are loving that for the big monitor look when you have a number of windows that you need to keep open all the time. But as well, we have little um, portable USB driven displays that give you a second monitor if you're uh, presenting or something like that that's hmm. thin and cheap and driven by a single USB-C connector. So there's a lot of really cool stuff coming from the client solutions group as well. Very exciting. Well, I have an uh, appointment to get by there and see some of the technology firsthand. I wanna thank you for taking some time to speak with Post, sharing some of the insight and uh, details on what you guys have at NAB. And if anybody wants to follow up either after the show, what website would we direct them to to find out more about your product information? The shortened URL for Dell's particular m and &E, uh, resources is uh, dell.to slash media. And that's the shortened URL that will get you to all of our products and all of our use cases, case studies with a media and entertainment focus. Excellent. Well, thanks again for your time, Tom. I appreciate Thank you, you uh, sharing your insight with Post and our audience. Great. Glad to see you. Look forward to seeing you at the show. Happy Absolutely. to- yeah. Take you through some of the infrastructure and software we've talked about this morning. Great. Thanks, Tom. You got it.